demonetized, 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 demonetized. What's up, everyone, and welcome to FAQ number 80. Last week's FAQ was a complete success. I had my wife Louise with me. You guys uh, asked us some really fucked up questions and we answered your fucked up questions. So yeah, seeing the success of that FAQ, it probably has to become a thing. So you're probably gonna see Louise here and there uh, in the future. Something I also wanted to say is that in exactly one week, my uh, solo album will be released. 24th for March, thank you. And uh, on Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 23rd, I will have a live stream happening on my channel. This is not for members, this is for everyone that subscribed to my channel. And we're gonna have a listening party to my album. I'll be there, I'll uh, sit and talk, you can ask me questions, I'll answer and I'll comment on the album and whatnot. So I'll leave a link up here directly to the live stream that you can go there and put a reminder. It's gonna be at 7 p.m. Central European time. I don't know what the fuck that is in your country. But uh, I'll link something, you know, because people just can't figure that shit out. Great. And for all of you who have pre-ordered the album, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Me and my wife are currently kind of setting up for sending everything out and all the pre-orders out. Unfortunately, the vinyls have been delayed. So the people that uh, bought the Ultimate Edition or the Vinyl Edition will get their uh, shipment a little bit later. And I'm sorry that the uh, printer just uh, had a delay or whatever the fuck they will call it. So uh, there you go. But everything else will be shipped out shortly. Uh, great. Thank you so much. Frank Huerd Cortez. Hola, hola. Question in Spanish. ¿Cómo estás, compadre? Oh, oh, vale. Oh, eh, está muy bien. Gracias. Gracias, amigo. Gracias. Fuck, uh, Ola the Spanglisher. Rina Bortone. Hi Ola, you're the best to me. Oh, you're literally, 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 literally changing my life. Oh, my perspective on music, shit. You're a teacher to me. Oh, even you don't know it. Yeah. Thank you for that. My question, how many, how may I improve my playing? Sometimes I feel stuck, especially on theory. I'd love if you hear something on my channel just to give me advices. Thanks again. I'm not gonna check out your channel because I'm just, I'm just way too big of a YouTuber to uh, to go there, you know, to go visit those small people. You guys are small people. Disclaimer, that was a joke, but I'm gonna try and give you a tip anyway. For me, and this is something I say often, is when you feel like you're in a rut or that you're not improving in your playing, Try and take a step back, you know, maybe you're practicing, maybe you're over practicing and you feel frustrated. Take a step back, try to enjoy music again, listen to your favorite albums, listen to new music and just try and learn new shit. That has always worked for me and it's something, you know, I'm a true believer in. So there you go. That's a great little tip for you, but I'm not going to check out your channel. Hola the assholeer. Sil Vorbach. Hi Ola. What is your dream guitar? My dream guitar has changed throughout the years of me playing guitar. I think back when uh, I started playing guitar, you know, my dream guitar was to have like a jazz master actually, because I thought it looked cool when uh, Kurt Cobain played one. Never had one though. But uh, then my dream guitar would be a dime bag guitar uh, when I grew up. A Universe Ibanez. I have that one. I have a Washburn 3ST which is also my, you know, one of my dream come true guitars. I have an Ibanez John Petrucci guitar. And can you see the pattern here? I'm trying to kind of like snag all my dream guitars. So I know that I have them. And also now I have the Dean from Hell US version. And uh, I'm very happy that I have uh, all these four guitars. But there is actually one guitar that I still kind of get that's always been on my wish list ever since it got released and it's the Southern Cross Washburn guitar. And you know, I've been trying to get one for... since it got released basically, but they just go up in value over and over. And you know, I, I was a part of a live auction now a couple of months back where one was auctioned off and it went for $9,000. It's insane. I just want to have the guitar. I just don't want to overpay. It's a guitar, goddammit, and I just want it, please. Help a brother out. I don't want to pay 
10 grand for a guitar. <laughs> oh, it's insane. I could have seen myself put like 4 grand on that guitar uh, in the auction, but then it became 9 grand. Great, so I'm still on the search for that one and it probably won't happen seeing how it's kind of like, you know, it's just... So there you go, that's my dream guitar right now. Darth Green, hey Ola, what plans do you have for Feared in the near future? Well, in the near future, I don't really have that much plan to be honest, but I think that my next step uh, for writing music might be another Feared album. I don't know. I'm currently also working on another The Haunted album, but... Uh, Next step, I'm not sure if I'm going to make another solo album or another Feared album. I think when I start writing again for real, I will know if it's going to be a Feared album or a solo album. So we'll just have to see what happens. But uh, yeah, can't really say anything. I don't have any plans. I suck. Aaron Luckett, could you play that killer main riff from Arch Enemies? The world is yours, please. No. Camille Sagan. Hi Ola, Winter and Fuhrer Incarnatus sounds incredibly great for me. How did you make guitar tones on these albums? What gear was used? Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Uh, on those two albums I used the Fortin Satan, my Fortin Satan. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's why it sounds so killer. John Patrick, have you been playing piano a long time? Sounds great on the new song, Solar Part 1. Thank you so much. Maybe you don't know this, but I actually started playing piano before I started playing guitar. I don't know how old I was, like 9 or 10. So I played a, a little bit of piano for 2 or 3 years and then I started playing guitar and then I kind of know my way around the piano. I'm not a good piano player, but uh, you know, I can figure shit out. That's enough for me to figure shit out, basically. Jeff Winner, question. What was the biggest obstacle when doing the new solo album and was the creative process different from feared albums? The, the creative process is not different in that sense, but I think the absolute biggest obstacle for me is just deciding on the fact that I would release an instrumental album under my name. Because I've always kind of leaned back on the fact that, you know, I was in a band and I never really thought that anyone would be interested in what I did as a person. Uh, I thought it always would be more simpler under a band name and, and people can like a band and, uh, you know, I thought it's just really hard for me to imagine that people would enjoy something with my complete name on it. And it's, uh, yeah, so that was definitely the biggest hurdle for me. And uh, still kind of is, to some degree. Maybe it's like the, my self-doubt that we all have. It might not seem like I have self-doubt, but believe me, I do have it. <laughs> And I don't think that's a bad thing to have some self-doubt because, you know, I'm never happy with what I do and I try to constantly push what I'm doing. So I just keep it at a, uh, at a good level. I don't think it's bad to question what you're doing. And uh, I'm still not sure about the new album. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I hope you like it. I, yeah. I'll, I'll guess we'll know next week after the album drops. Jesseb O'Donnell, Ola, Solar 8-string guitars, will it ever happen? I sure hope so. I would buy one, maybe even two. Nah, I'm not that big fan of 8-string guitars and in general and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, who uses that law of tuning anyway? You're in there competing with the bass guitar, man. So uh, no, there won't be any 8-string guitars. Absurdist. Any chance solar guitars will make lefties at some point? I really like the style, but it's still edgy style. It would perfectly match my insecurities. Uh, will solar guitars make lefties at some point? Okay, I was about to be an asshole, but I'm not going to be an asshole today. I'm positive Ola. Yes, no, uh, up to this point we've had three different left-handed guitars available. And uh, you just go to the website and check them out. You see, they're, they're the ones that look uh, mirrored. We've had two seven-string left hands. Now we had, the latest one was the black one. Go check it out. It's the A2.7C left-handed. So uh, we've had them for a long time. So don't give me that bullshit that uh, we're not doing left-handed guitars. We are doing left-handed guitars because I love you guys. I'm like the only guy who loves left-handed guitar players. I'm your best friend. Ricky, Ola, how do you feel about 9-inch nails? Also, cheers, my good man. Okay, I think I might be 
disappointing a lot of people when I say that I've never actually been a fan of Nine Inch Nails ok, stop I know what you're thinking saying that is that because I never really gotten into Nine Inch Nails it's not like I don't like the music or anything like that it's just that I haven't listened to him and you know, Trent Reznor, I know he's a badass and you know, he's creating video game music and you know, orchestration really weird, sick shit but I never listened to Nine Inch Nails you know, the most I listened to Nine Inch Nails and the Trent Reznor songs was in Quake, I guess sorry, I don't know uh, uh, yeah, ok, so recommend me a good Nine Inch Nails album and I'll try to listen to it, ok? great, I'm, I'm not gonna leave it at me just not listening to the band they're well known for a reason they probably have to have a good album out there link it to me, ok? Jerk Face Fuckasaurus Rex <laughs> you guys are the best, wonderful couple you should do more of these he's referring to my wife FAQ the only reason why I picked this question because your name, Jerk Face Fuckasaurus Rex is just Thank you so much. I truly enjoy your uh, screen name. Appadap. Hey, <laughs> Appadap. Hey, Ola, what kind of music did you listen to growing up? Hadegrimt. When I was like five or six years old, the only type of music I listened to was, you know, like hard rock and heavy metal. Uh, but, you know, at that point, I didn't actually listen to it. I was just enjoying, you know, a certain type of sound. And, you know, I was listening a lot to Twisted Sister at the time and you know, that one song and I just listened to it over and over and over so I didn't really see myself as listening to, you know, the albums I listened a lot to Aerosmith like, yeah, but I wasn't really into it I just liked their songs, they were easy listening but then when I became a teenager, I started listening to Nirvana and that was kind of like what sparked my music interest and Nirvana and the grunge genres in uh, general like, I listened a lot to Mudhoney, you know, Soundgarden uh, what else? Tad, shit um, yeah I was really into it, that made me start playing guitar and uh, very quickly after that I started listening to Pantera and uh, Bolt Thrower actually, out of all the death metal bands I kind of like got into Bolt Thrower actually before Pantera because the simple reason I was playing Warhammer at the time and there was this band called Bolt Fur, which is like their, one of the main weapons and uh, oh, getting so nerdy right now I had a Space Wolf army by the way and then later I had a Chaos army so don't give me that shit, I was legit Warhammer 40k player I started listening to Bolt Fur and like holy shit, this is amazing and then I started listening to Pantera, Machine Head uh, what else, Slayer obviously, Sepultura, holy shit like all these 90s bands, Entombed and uh, wow, I just discovered Mel for real and it was just like fuck, there it is there it is, that's what I've been missing my whole life my purpose in life was to listen to this type of music this aggressive music that Pantera did and you know, Sepultura and Machine Head and it's like, ah, ah. and obviously Dream Theater as well at the time made me go into more of the progressive side of things but Pantera's the shit man, that's what, that's, you know, I live and breathe Pantera and I know a lot of people hate Pantera but no you're way off South Aus 420 Australia you're coming to Australia in April? do tell more yes, I am coming to Australia and New Zealand in uh, April I'm going there with The Haunted we're playing together with At The Gates and Witchery go check us out wave to me, I'm gonna be there I'm gonna be in Australia for the second time it's gonna be amazing but I'm gonna be in New Zealand for the absolute first time so I'm really looking forward to it it's gonna be exciting, exciting times I, I hope to make some sightseeing there in uh, New Zealand Tihi Lawrence, ah, oh, I know that name I've seen one of your questions before can we get a picture of Ola on a horse? yes, I think I actually have one I'm gonna find it later but I bet you it's the most majestic picture you're ever gonna see in your life so hold your horses The Dan Val, for the next FAQ what are your thoughts on the appeal against the 44 royalty rise? Is it time for the musician community to finally unite and do something about it? People love talking about inequalities, I see this as inequality in the music industry Ok, so he's talking about Spotify and Amazon uh, working back at whatever they, they did in the US they were, it would mean that musicians would get more paid and it's like the people that are kind of complaining about this are the people 
that haven't adapted to the new form of music business. I see what's happening. It's like, you know, you're 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 beating a dead horse here. It's like, you know, people are not consuming music in the same way they are doing back then. And you know, people can go whine about them not making as much money anymore. And it's like, uh, just adapt. You know, fine. I'm not making as much money from my album streaming or whatever nowadays. That's fine. You know what makes me really happy? Now that I've uh, done pre-orders for uh, my solo album, is that I see a lot of people out there, they want to pay for the album and the music, and it makes me really, really happy and really, really proud. I have not seen, and I've never had as many pre-orders as I have right now on the Old England solo album, Master of the Universe, you can buy it up here, Old England Salesman, but I never had so many pre-orders for a physical CD before, which is something that I truly, truly love to see, because even though CDs have been the a dying format and no one buys CDs anymore. But the trend here is that people order more. It might be because my channel is a lot bigger and maybe my music appeals to more people because there's no growl singing on it. But it just makes me so proud seeing that people want to support music because people want to support what they love, I guess. And that makes me insanely happy. And you know, there's other ways of supporting a band then, you know, streaming their music on, uh, on uh, Spotify or whatever. You can go buy one of their shirts online. You can go watch their show, buy some merch at their show. And I mean, there's just so many different things that you can do to support a band today. And I think the focus here uh, with the appeal is that they're, they're not, uh, they're focusing on the wrong things, basically. Maybe that's just me. It's my view of things. I've always been more about not complaining about what's going to happen. I've been more about trying to adapt, see the future and what I need to do to continue on in the future. I think that's way more important than just sitting, you know, looking back and saying, ah, this and this and just complain about shit. Stop complaining, adapt and shut the fuck up. Okay? Great. Positive Ola. Marco Mudu. Hi Ola, did you realize that the issue with you calling female audience woman is not actually you calling your female audience women, but it's how you pronounce the word women? It's pronounced women, not women. Oh my god. Oh. Willem Strasse. Chinola, what is the highest number of audience you have played live for? Anyway, you're awesome. Have a nice day. Thank you so much. I think the biggest crowd that I've ever played to was with Six Feet Under, our first festival gig at Wacken. And uh, <laughs> it, I think it was... I think the calculation was that there were 55,000 people in the audience. That was a big, big show. But I mean, at that point, you know, it's weird on these festivals where you play to a lot of people. I, you know, I played Summer Breeze and all that, and you know, that's 20,000 people. And, uh, and you know, when there's that many people, in some weird way, it's a lot easier to play, to be honest. I think it's a lot harder on me if I play in front of three people, or four people in a small club. That's just way more up and in your face and uh, nerve-wracking in that sense. Playing 50,000 people, that's easy. <laughs> Noir, what do you think about the new Nick Johnston song? Oh, Nick Johnston. Oh man, I love that man. I love him. Okay, so the, the style that Nick Johnston is doing, I have no idea what to call that style. Is it progressive? Is it, it just, it's just really good music. And uh, the, his album, Remarkably Human, it's an amazing album. I, oh shit, I've, I've seen him do clinics and workshop and wow, he's, he's mind-blowingly good. I mean, he has such a natural way of playing. I can just, you know, it could just be him and his guitar for an hour without any, you know, music or anything like that. Just him playing, noodling around. It's just like, oh, you know, I envy him because he's just such an amazing guitar player. I truly, truly adore him. And uh, he's a nice guy too. Uh, simple, amazing. New song, Gemini, I think it's called. Excellent. It's definitely in the vein of Nick Johnston. It's exactly what I expected it to be. And it was none short of amazing. Thank you so much. Big fan of Nick Johnston. He's releasing a solo album. Uh, I don't know when it's out. Go support him. He's an excellent guitar player. And uh, yeah. But remember, you can also pre-order my soul album up here.
you know, I'm almost as good as Nick Johnston. Please support. William Bratton, what are you currently listening to? Ok, so for the past week I've actually listened to the new Dream Theater album a lot. And uh, it's actually growing on me and, you know, it's actually a good album. It's not as good as the, 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 the real Dream Theater albums, but if you just forget about those, you know, uh, up until like uh, Train of Thought or whatever, if you just forget all about those and just listen to this album, the production is supreme, I would say. It's, it's very enjoyable to listen to and uh, I think my favorite song is actually the bonus song, Viper... What's it called? Viper King. Listen to this fucking groove, man. It's, it's a non-typical dream for a song, but still. Demonetize, 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 demonetize. Now, I just think that the song Viper King just really fits the production. I think it's the best sounding song because the production sounds at its fullest in that song. Listen to this motherfucker. Yeah, shit. That's a great song. So yeah, this is definitely the best Mike Mangini album uh, with Dream Fair. So I'm liking it. PRS950. Hi, Ola. That FAQ was really inspiring and refreshing. Thank you. Thank you. When I was a student, I had friends from around the world who came studying in Canada and they taught how to say Would you like to eat a tomato in different languages? Can you teach me how to say it in Swedish? Thanks, Dominic. I guess. Okay. Would you like to eat a tomato? Vill du äta en tomat? Shit. This Swedish word day has gotten into a new low. Thanks to this guy. But at least you gave me something to say because I hate this segment. Fran Verona, hi Ola. We always talk about how important the gear is, amps, guitars, pedals, but we never talk about cables. Is that important to you to choose the right ones? Does it really matter to spend more money on good ones? Thanks. Okay, so regarding the cable question. It's a good question and I think a lot of people have no fucking idea uh, what cable to buy, if it makes sense or not. I've, I have a pretty basic rule, is that if you at least don't buy the absolute most cheap cables, you're probably gonna be fine. I'm very lucky in that sense that... Um, no, I'm not very lucky because I paid money. <laughs> you know, I have the Adario cables and I've been using the Adario cables for a couple of years now and... Uh, they're just excellent cables. Let's see. I think this is their... Not sure what it's called, but uh, it's a Diodario cable. It's really sturdy, sounds really good, has a golden tip. You know when it's in gold? You know it's extra good. So the tip is in gold and the uh, sleeve is in silver. And that's real silver. No, it's not. No. But yeah, Diodario cables. I've been using that for a couple of years. I'm not sponsored, I just buy them. They're expensive, yes, but... I know, I can trust them, and they sound absolutely sick. Can you hear? So there they go. Did you like that sound? That's the cable. Should we do a riff of the day maybe? Oh! Day. <laughs> oh, I have a great one. This is Exodus. Uh, what's the song? Blacklist. Shit, this is a cool fucking riff. I love this. It's very simple. You know, if you're a beginner, this is this is perfect for you. Okay, goes like this. <laughs> Simple as fuck. And finally, I got a riff of the day for you guys. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for watching my FAQ. Remember, next Saturday, live stream. I'll link it up here and then in exactly one week, my album is going to be released. And it's going to be in an FAQ, I guess, because it's on a Sunday.
album release on a Sunday. You heard it first from Old England to Swede. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for being a subscriber. Thank you so much. How many times can I say thank you so much without being a totally salesperson? See you next time. Bye.